Let's take a look at a Henry's Law problem. In the video describing Henry's Law, I talked about how carbon dioxide can be um, dissolved in water, and we can use Henry's Law to describe the solubility of gases being dissolved in solvents like water. So here's an example. The Henry's Law constant at 25 degrees for carbon dioxide in water is 1.65 times 10 to the third ATM, or 1650 ATM. Let's calculate the moles of carbon dioxide dissolved per liter of water if, when we're making a carbonated beverage, the beverage is bottled under a carbon dioxide pressure of 5 atm. So, this is actually a pretty real-life situation. When they make soda, you know, Coke or Pepsi, they bottle it under a high pressure of carbon dioxide in the neighborhood of 5 atm. So let's see if we can figure out how many moles of carbon dioxide might be in a liter of a typical bottle of soda. All right, so we're playing around with Henry's Law. So the pressure of the carbon dioxide is equal to the Henry's Law constant for carbon dioxide in water times the mole fraction of carbon dioxide. So, if we want to know how much carbon dioxide is in solution, we need to know the Henry's Law constant, and we need to know the partial pressure of carbon dioxide that the solution is um, being put under. Alright, so what we can do is we can solve this then for the mole fraction of CO2. And so that'll be equal to the pressure of CO2 divided by the Henry's Law constant, which in this problem is uh, 5 atm divided by 1,650 atm. And so that's going to come out to be 3.03 .03 times 10 to the minus 3. So that's the mole fraction of the carbon dioxide that's in my solution. Now the problem said that we want to figure out how much carbon dioxide, how many moles of carbon dioxide are in a liter of water. So a liter of water is of course 1000 milliliters of water and we know that the density of water is one gram per milliliter so this then is equal to a thousand grams of water. All right, so then this is going to tell me that my moles of water will be equal to 1,000 grams divided by the molar mass of water, which is about 18.02 grams per mole. So this tells me then that I have 55.5 moles of water in my one liter of water. All right, well, I know the mole fraction of the carbon dioxide in the water, and I know the moles of water, so I can go ahead and start to solve this. The mole fraction of the CO2 is technically equal to the moles of CO2 divided by the moles of water plus the moles of CO2. But I'm going to simplify this because... I have so few moles of CO2, right? The mole fraction is very small. So this essentially then is equal to the moles of CO2 divided by just the moles of water because the moles of CO2 that I have here is going to be very small in comparison to the moles of water. So I can make this simplification. And I already know that this is going to then be equal to x that's what I'm trying to find, over 55.5, and I know that all of this has to equal the 3.03 .03 times 10 to the minus third, uh, 3.03 .03 times 10 to the minus 3. So then this is going to tell me then that x, which is equal to my moles of CO2, is going to be equal to about 0 0.17 moles of CO2, okay? So take 55.5, multiply it by 3.03 .03 times 10 to the minus 3. 55.5 times 3.03 .03 to the minus third. And yes, that will give us, whoops, I had some calculator troubles here. I just want to double check my answer. Uh, 55.5. 
Yep, 0.168 over 0.17 moles of CO2. So we have about 0.17 moles of CO2 in that liter of Coke or Pepsi that we're drinking.